Death Valley, known for extremes of temperature and thirst. One enduring mystery is how rocks describe long trails in the surface of a dry lake, the racetrack. Hi, I'm Dick Norris, and this past winter I and my colleagues observed the rocks in motion for the first time. I'm going to show you a whiteboard demonstration of what we think is the mechanism. The racetrack is surrounded by mountains, and its surface is scattered with hundreds of rocks. The rocks range from pebbles to giant monsters up to 600 pounds. These form trails that zig and zag across the playa and can be as much as 800 feet long. This past November, a winter storm dropped rain and snow on the dry lake forming a shallow pond. This pond was about three inches deep on the southern end and thinned to a mere mud flat on the north side. The pond stretched over the southern third of the racetrack as seen in these aerial images. In December, freezing nights formed a skim of floating windowpane ice on the pond. This ice was clear as glass and only a few millimeters thick. When the sun came up on December 20th, a light breeze started up and this caused the large sheets of floating and melting ice to move, shoving rocks in front of them. Trails formed out of sight in the muddy water underneath the ice. By late afternoon, winds had driven the water across the pond, exposing hundreds of rock trails. When the sun set, the wind slackened and the pond refilled the low part of the playa. By January, the pond had begun to dry out, and this continued into February. Finally, by March, it was completely gone, exposing the now mud-cracked lake bed with its new set of rock trails. These rocks and their new trails were exposed for all to see and marvel at. These trails can exist for a decade or more before a new pond forms that is deep enough to form floating ice and make the rocks move once again. This is an extremely rare phenomenon because the racetrack is dry 99% of the time. And when there is a pond and the rocks are in motion, it's still very difficult to observe. Rocks move incredibly slowly, the trails form out of sight underneath floating ice, and oftentimes you have multiple rocks moving together, so you have few stationary reference points. On January 9th, my colleagues were out there looking for rocks in motion, and yet they had rocks moving right in front of them, and no one noticed until after the event. And then finally, if you decide to go, realize that you have a one to two hour drive over rough, bouncy roads. The entry road into the racetrack is in extremely poor condition right now. And you'll need to have a high clearance vehicle and good tires, because it's extremely easy to blow a tire by driving too fast. So if you go, drive safe. Thanks so much.